guys and welcome to Vanguard Tactics. I'm Stephen Box and I'm joined today with Joe Coles. Hello. Now, this is a slightly different video than we've shown to you guys before mm. because this is actually one of our weekly lessons that you get when you are on our Vanguard Tactics Academy. Yes. And this is what we call the Army List Clinic. Yeah. So what happens, guys, we're giving you, the public who love the Vanguard Tactics channel, a insight into what you get when you are part of the academy. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because we are doing a free Warhammer 40k Army List Masterclass on Saturday. And I'm going to be covering the top strategies and tips that I go through every single time that I'm thinking about writing a list some of the concepts that we teach on the academy, because if you are thinking about army list writing, you know, we don't want you making the sort of common mistakes. I put out an email today on our email list where I shared what those mistakes were. Um, and ultimately, I don't want you to make the same mistakes. So I want to sh give you the rationale behind list writing. Um, we've got some great examples today from some of the students that are putting in new lists. And every single week when you're on the academy, we give you feedback. Now. To some of the people that are coming to the masterclass, the link is below. So if you want to sign up for it, just head to the link in the description, sign up for it on Saturday. If you can't make it live, you will get 48 hours to replay it. Now, if you are live, you will have a chance to submit your army list and I'm going to give you, your army list, a complete review like I'm going to do today. Now, we've had I've asked students to say, look, check a list in today. So we've got some and some of them are at a point where They've gone through module one mm -hmm. and on the academy, sorry, module two on the academy where they've done all the homework tasks and everything like that. They fully refine their army list. So some of the army lists presented are going to be at the sort of top level where a little bit of refinement's being made. How can we tweak it to play the mission a little bit better? How can we build in some redundancies? That mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Some of the other lists are very fresh by you know new students and you're gonna be taken through the process that I go through and Joe goes through when we give you guys feedback on a weekly basis, okay? So um, yeah, you kind of get a bit of an insight, so I hope you like it. And this is actually one of the three lessons, sorry, three, three lessons that we teach every single week in the academy, which is live, where we give you bespoke feedback. One of them is on how to pick secondaries. Yep. So we give you a mission, and we cover that and I'll maybe next week what we'll do is show you a pick your secondaries and actually I'll tell you what if you sign up for the masterclass I'll give you a free lesson anyway on yeah. picking secondaries uh, from one of the shows that we've done previously so you can see that and then we do a general sort of quiz show as well don't we yeah um, and that's in addition to all the content that you get on the academy where you can scroll through all the different plays in um, like Vanguard Tactics strategy playbooks and all the other lessons that we've got on there like if you signed up for our Learn to Play 40K series, similar, but just much, much more advanced. All right. Anyway, so we're going to cover, what's the first list we've got to look at today then, Joe? So the first list is a Imperial Fist successor chapter. Okay. And we've got a firstborn captain. Yep. With Power X, Mastercrafted, Combi Melter, uh, the Hand of Dawn, um, Warlord trait, and he's got an additional one on top, which is Architect of War. He's got a librarian with a force axe and jump pack yep. with the Tome of Malkador to give him an extra psychic power. He's yep. got Veil of Time, Psychic Fortress and Null Zone. He's got a Lieutenant in Phobos Armour mm -hmm. uh, here of the chapter. Um, and he's got the Ghost Weave Cloak which gives him a better cover save. He's got an Apothecary, Chief Apothecary yep. here of the chapter. Uh, ten Stern Guard, all with bolt guns. Five Tactical Marines with a heavy bolt with a power axe. Five Tactical Marines with a flamer. And then two units of infiltrators, a unit of three suppressors, another unit of three suppressors, two whirlwinds, a predator annihilator with th the four las cannons, and a drop pod. Yep. And that's seventeen fifty points. So you still got two fifty points left to yep. play with. Now Dave has said this is a very early edition, like very early stages. Mm. Dave actually, um, we, we've been working on his Tau list. I know yeah. he sent us a lovely email to say thank you for the help that he's received on the Tau list. And when he went to his tournament, felt really, really confident with his Tau list and you know, knew exactly what to do, which is perfect. 
He wanted to change it up a little bit. I think he really likes the Imperial Fist from the sounds of his email. Yeah. This are the, these are the models that he's ha he has, okay? Yes. So we're gonna work with this as a base. Mm. We only will swap equipment, stuff like that, really, mm. um, with, or, or minimal spends to get you going. But and it really depends, again, like if you're in a position where you're like, look, this is a new army, I'm happy to invest in it. Tell me what I need to buy. Okay, cool, we can just optimize it to yeah. the max. If these are models that you've got and you want to, you know, how's the best way to run them? Um, or maybe there are other options that he's happy to get. He clearly said that in this message as well, that he's happy to buy a few more things. So anyway, let's go through some of this stuff. So when we're talking about characters, let's really lean into one of the, you know, biggest characters in the Imperial Fist one. And that's obviously, he's gone for the captain. Yep. Now, the only thing with this captain is the power racks... I feel like is a bit of a waste of points mm -hmm. because you're either going to get this character into combat and really do something in it. If that's going to be the case, you really want to make sure he can deliver. And that's with either a power fist or a thunder hammer, something that's going to give you some good damage output. But the way that the Imperial fists fight, mainly long range warfare, good artillery, that kind of stuff. So we don't really need the weapons on him. Okay. We don't need that heavy hitting so much. So really what we need to be looking at is what's a different type of character. So we either make him a chapter master, so we can yeah. get a unit with full rerolls, a core unit, so that's an option what we could do. Or the option that I would like to see is Targaragon. Is that his name? Tar Targaragon. Whatever his name, yeah. Mr. Big Fist. Yeah. Okay. Now, the great thing about him is he, he acts as a captain. Yeah. And in addition to that, this is the absolute beauty of it, and I double check the FAQ, this hasn't changed, no. he gives a unit plus one to hit. Hmm. Any unit plus one to hit. Yeah. Now, there was one unit in particular that I think is iconic for the Imperial Fists, hmm. and they've suffered massively because of the changes to the Space Marine Codex, and that is the Centurion Devastators. They are real good as fists still. Very good as fists, and also, the other good thing about them is that they're just a unit. Mm. They've got the infantry keyword, great, so they can walk through breachable terrain. They get all the benefits of cover. And also now you can just hit them, get them hit on twos. Yep. Hitting on twos, you don't really need much more than that, to be honest. All right. Yes, you might not benefit from the re-rolls, but just getting those, mm. you know, hitting on twos is fantastic. And you can play the strategy for them to be in... All doctrines. Yep. So if you're taking the heavy bolter variant because Imperial fists, it means that the heavy bolters become minus two. Yep. And then the uh, hurricane bolters are minus one. So you See, get a lot of minuses in there. I was actually thinking not taking the hurricane bolters. I'm going for the missiles. I was thinking missiles mm -hmm. and las cannons. Yeah. To really make use of, and I think the reason why I'm going over this first is because this is the centerpiece. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see four to five Centurions all hitting on twos, missiles, last cannons. Yeah. I would really like to see that. And then the reason why this is so important is because yeah. when you look into the book, there's um, psychic powers that you can heal wounds. Mm -hmm. The Chief Apothecary can bring a full one back. He can heal wounds as well. Yeah. So if you can have this big old unit of five Centurions that are constantly coming back to life, I think is incredible from both the psychic powers and also that. Now, I also believe um, there is a psychic power which allows you to get a additional um, cover save. Yes. Which again is going to be really, really good on these, you know, two plus save models. I'm just going to bring up their codex now so I can get, make sure I'm giving you the correct information. So. Why am I telling you all this? Because again, this is the centerpiece of the army. We've got Tower Garagon, he's core, he's a key He's a key unit, I mean, not core, shouldn't use that word now. Uh, but then also we've got this main five-man unit with Laz Cannons and also, um, you know, the and the great thing about these, because these are all hitting on um, twos, yep. they're, in heavy, they're in the heavy doctrine, they don't suffer the penalties for moving and shooting. No. Nope. And also, they're over strength seven, they're heavy weapons in Devastator Doctrine, which basically means, obviously, they're going to be getting that additional damage. Yeah. So your last cannons are minimum damage two, maximum damage seven. Yeah, and then minus four AP. Minus four AP, yeah. And then the missile launchers are minus three. Yeah. Minimum, what, two? Now, so I'd definitely take a Librarian or an Apothecary, or probably both. 
But there's another one nice here called Architects of War. Okay, good war or trade. And basically, if your opponent's got minus one, and there's a lot of minus one in the game now, you think about Necrons, minus one firepower, um, you're looking at anything that is, um, you know, like tactical marines, mm -hmm. um, aggressors, straight on this one, you add an additional one to your cover save. So, you know, if you are in cover, absolutely brilliant um, with this unit. They have got a stratagem uh, if they're within three inches of an objective. Yep. They get an additional minus one. Additional plus one to their cover. Yeah, a measure yeah. plus one to their cover. Yeah. So these guys, you can be on like negative one, yeah. basically on their save. Yeah, which I really, really like. Um, the other great thing about the uh, Imperial Fist is called Titanic Purge. Yeah. Really good power, minus two, and subtract them off the roll. So mm. it's within 12 inches, but a nice librarian power there. Um, so just to make charges that a little bit more challenging. So I do like that. Um, so again, it just helps this the way this army wants to play. Now he's got the tactical marines in there. So, well, first of all, in terms of HQs, keep that. And then the other one you want to take is the relic that allows you the Eye of Hypno, is it? So you yep. get reroll because you've got a lieutenant in there now as well. Yep. So you've got the librarian, you've got the um, Targaragon. He, the librarian's also are acting as a lieutenant. Um, a lieutenant. And it, depending on if you feel like you need the extra wounds, you could take the Null Zone option. Um, the psychic, the psychic fortress for the five plus invulnerable safe. So if you've got some really good utility there and a bit of play testing through different matchups will really help you know consolidate those. So again, when we talk about the masterclass, we're going to go over why you need to have absolutely everything in your list. Okay, so one of the things we're doing here is really leaning into the fact that we need to be over strength seven with heavy weapons. So we've got one core unit that does that exceptionally well, yeah. and that is obviously a heavy support choice. Okay. Then, based on the units that we've already got, then we're going to use, you know, three units of tactical marines. Yeah, yep. great. Backfield holders, um, you know, they've obviously got bolt weapons, and that's just what we want to keep on them is just bolt weapons, okay? Um, the other good thing that you could start to do with these tactical squads is you might even take heavy bolters. Well, I know it's, it's a, it, there's a heavy bolter in one of them. Yeah, so. you, you might just go, okay, I'll take two units of heavy bolters in, because again, although you're moving, hitting on fours, any sixes you roll do explode. So you probably get one back per shot, so it probably averages out. But because you're gonna get that you know, extra point of damage now, heavy bolt is being flat damage too, that's great. It just means that you've got a bit of threat in each of those units, okay? So I would really like to see that, you know? Um, and again, it, but I would only add that in at the end of the list where you're like, okay, I've got, 40 points left over, what do I add in? Okay, heavy bolt on every single squad. Yeah. yeah. Use a little fill in like that. But I'd, so I'd keep it lean first of all, just three units of five. There's cover your bases, you've got your two HQs, you filled out your battalion, that's gonna be your CPs. Um, and then in terms of the rest of the units, it, it sounds like you like suppressors. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Three units of those. Brilliant fire base, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, definitely take those. They're strength seven again. Devastator Doctor, and yes, they're not bolt weapons, so they don't get the exploding, but they ignore cover. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that's the suppressors, because they're only minus one. They'll be minus two in Devastator Doctor, in, but now, obviously, um, they're re-rolling ones where they're because of the aura, because they've got the core keyword. Yes. So you need three units of those, okay? So three units of those, fill out that fast attack, super cheap. And then for your heavy support, you've got the two whirlwinds. I know you've already got them, so keep them in the list. Again, they work great as that mobile fire, uh, sorry, a more static fire base. Again, they're over that strength seven, and they're gonna really put a good dent into any vehicles that your opponent's got, um, because you know, they are gonna get that plus one damage turn one. Good bit of indirect fire, which means you can fish your opponent out of objectives. So then the, the question relies, what do we do with the rest? Mm. How do we feel about these stern guard? I know you said in your justification as to why you took them is to really help the kind of backfield um, or, you know, put some pressure on there. I think a drop pod and a squad is too easy to zone out. Yeah. And I think what that enables your opponent to do if they're savvy is wrap your um, dreadnought, uh, sorry, wrap the drop pod, string back to an objective, and now you can't target the objective yeah. or the unit holding that objective. So that's giving your opponent a very easy way to hold their backfield. The stern guard without any rerolls aren't going to do a great deal, I don't think. So it's just a huge points investment, 
because it's like 350 points so, for the for both the stern guard and the drop pod i think or, or so near it's, it's 205 points for the 10 man spoiler stern guard yep and then the drop pod is 70. so, so 275 points it's a big investment to not do much that's three centurions with last cannons when you put it like that Again, I'd remove those from the list. So the way the Imperial Fist, we need to think about how is this list going to score in the primary. I'd really like to see with those 275 points, three unit of infiltrators. Yeah, he's got two units in there already, so, or five. Um, but it looks like you've already got two boxes of the, the Phobos start collecting box set, so you're going to have them knocking You're going to need another unit of suppressors anyway. Yeah. Three units is going to be key because the, the Imperial Fists want to be able to provide a front line of just, you can't deep strike us because no. we're over 12 inches away. They're in your midfield. They can raise banners, they can do object, um, obsec units and all that kind of stuff, do actions. The, the tactical marines can move up forward, your, your, your true borns yeah. on your backfield, again, raise banners, deploy scramblers, do any other actions that you need to. Um, and also just protecting, zoning out all your characters. And then you've got this, this really good fire base. You've got the, the static fire base that hitting on twos, re-rolling ones from the, um, the centurions. Yep. And then you've got the suppressors. Okay. Now, if you feel like what you could do in this list is take another captain with a jump pack. Yeah. Okay. Captain with a jump pack. And then you give him, him the eye of Hypno. So then what you're going to be doing is you've got the suppressors that are more of a moving firebase mm -hmm. that can he can just bounce around with. Maybe give him a Thunder Hammer Storm Shield. So you've got a bit of a smash captain there. Targaragon is another smash captain in your backfield for any nice little counter punch. Um, so your suppressors can go forward um, with that smash captain. So that's your third HQ slot. Okay, I know you spoke about a Tech Marine. Tech Marine's okay, but you can only buff one whirlwind. I don't think it's worth it. No. And then any points left over, probably put some servo turrets in just for some good lols. Yeah, yeah. those things are pretty tasty. Are they a heavy support option or elite? They are heavy support. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. so no, that's not going to be a good shout. So unless we start to open up another detachment, which you could think about doing because you've got plenty of uh, troop choices to do it, yeah. you could just take another patrol detachment and take cost you two CPs. Depending on, again, after three, four games of playtesting, you're going to really understand, you know, how much CPs you're getting through. You're not really spending many pre-game. You're taking one extra relic, one extra warlord trait. Um, so you're only spending two there. That takes you down to 10. You could start on eight, go to nine. That's a pretty good starting amount. And that's going to unlock some more heavy support choices for you. The other thing that you could look at is three units of eliminators. They're very cheap. Mm -hmm. The great thing about eliminators, they get exploding sixes because they're bolt weapons. Yeah. So yeah, that is kind of, what, and you've probably already got the models if you've got that start collecting Phobos kit box. So we're really making the most out of that, using what you've got, adding a little bit of extra, but building in plenty of redundancy. Two whirlwinds is great. You can shut down their ability to charge. You've got the librarian that can also do the same. Um, if you've got the whirlwinds, maybe on the librarian, you go for the null zone option. Just yeah. turn off invulnerable saves that come close. You've got the infiltrators, you've got the suppressors, you've got the trueborn boys, you've got you've clearly got a smash captain because it's kind of like you've done that already, but we're just going to really ramp him up with a storm shield, thunder hammer. He runs around with the eye hit, no re-rolling ones of hit and wound. Uh, and then if you do have the eliminators as well, you can forward deploy them, and then the suppressors can catch up with them, and then all of a sudden that whole lot there is all getting re-roll ones to hit, re-roll ones to wound. The eliminators get an exploding sixes because they're a bolt weapon, and then the suppressors just putting out a hell of a lot of firepower. So yeah. That's my thoughts on the list. What do you reckon, Joe? It's pretty good. You like it? I like it. Okay. So yeah, again, just a few things we've tweaked, but really now starting to lean into what the Imperial Fist do best at. And uh, yeah, going from there. So Joe, what is the next list? The second list is Necrons. Okay, read out this Necron list. I'm currently going to go and get our laptop charger before this laptop does. Oh, okay then. So, it's split over two patrols. Uh, we have got the uh the, the custom dynasty to give the free six inch movement at the start of the game and all units are obsec we've got a command barge a chronomancer that gives the uh minus one to hit obviously gives it a five up um uh, invulnerable save and he's got the bane of darkness a chronomancer a technomancer uh so the, the um all the scarab units 
uh, get plus one to hit. Um, and then we've got another Lord with a Res Orb. Then we've got two units of 20 Warriors, a, a unit of six Lich Guard, two Tomb Spiders, two units of six Tomb Blades, and two units of six Scarabs. Okay, so... Interesting one. Uh, I like the offset element of the Necrons. Yeah. Now, again, if you just joined us live, guys, we are doing a, this is a, a lesson that we give for all of our uh, students on the academy, and we're doing a free masterclass on Saturday all about list building, how to look at lists, and how to then justify absolutely everything, because knowing why you have something in your list is incredibly important. Mm. I, put an, I put out an email today all about people that copy net lists, right? Yeah. They copy it, they're like, oh, I'll tweak it a bit. But they don't understand why absolutely everything is in that list in the way it is and all of a sudden it performs very differently they don't get that success um, and they're not really understanding the why so what we want to try and do on this master class is teach you what you need to be looking at why you need to be looking at all those different choices so let's start to break this down there's a lot in here to break down yeah so we can't probably cover absolutely everything with this but let's cover some of the core things that um, you know some of the rationale behind why we might take some of these units so what are the things you mentioned in there? So they're obsec and they get a free game move, yeah? Yeah. So the rationale behind this list is to get an early board presence, Yeah. to score very quickly on things like raise the banners because you can do actions with the Necrons whilst they're That's it. within objective range and you can shoot and all that kind of stuff at the same time, which is brilliant because of the code. So that's great. Lots of small multi-units, mm -hmm. which means all the units are obsec. Yeah. Okay, which is pretty clutch. However, there is a big however to this. The units of scarabs, how many models are they? Six. How many units of six? Two. Two. The bases are large. Yeah. It's going to be very unlikely in the current meta as it is, mm. you will be able to put more models on the objective. And yes, you've got obsec, which is great, mm. but in today's world of incursors, infiltrators, Warlord traits that give aggressors, obsec, custodes, death guard, harlequin troops. Mm. It's going to be very, very rare where you'll actually practically get more models on an objective because the way that the objective secured rule works is it just says if you both have obsec, yep. it comes down to how many models are within three of it, okay? It has nothing to do with, um, you know, if it was different, I would yeah. get it. But it comes down, it doesn't come down to how many models you have with OBSEC. So if you've got six models of OBSEC, yeah. and I've got one model of OBSEC, and then I've got five other just random models, hmm. it's still um, contested. Yeah, You don't hold it, I don't hold it, okay? So that's something to really consider with this list. Hmm. Now, the other thing as well is the Necrons... The biggest strength is reanimation protocols. You're paying a lot of additional points. So if you don't, if you disregard reanimation protocols, GW, when they write the rules, are charging you for that ability. Yeah. That is built into what you're paying for these models, okay? You either ignore it, and straight away you're like, well, if I'm not gonna really use reanimation, because when we look at this list, six Lich Guard, yeah? Yeah. Six Lich Guard are far too easy to kill. Mm. Because when it comes to reanimation, if I kill three off, mm. you get to roll six dice, you'll be lucky to get one back. Yeah? yeah. I can keep split firing at that Lich Guard unit, whittle you down so you don't get any Lich Guard back whatsoever, or if I've got enough of a punch, I can put all six in, mm. Or, or I can put enough shots in to kill all six. Yeah. So I think with the Lich Guard, you take all or none. Hmm. Okay? So you're a full real, ten. Or I zero. think it's full ten. If you're taking them solely protect your characters, hmm. maybe a different story. Okay? But you then need to hide them extremely well, and they're literally just going to stay in the middle of the table, behind a, you know, a wall or something, and your characters can kind of move, because they've got a really unique rule which allows them to um, you know, not get targeted if they're within three, right? No. So yeah. the Lich Guard kind of 
overrule the lookout sir which means if that's the purpose great but if you're wanting to as a counter punch if you're wanting to really rely on that uh, reanimation protocol we need more or you just take basic five because what's the point in six because if you're taking six again you've got to think about blast now you're yeah. susceptible to it because you've got six when you've got five models you can space them out and string them out two inches apart really really wide mm -hmm. when you're taking six they all have to be in coherency so they all have to be two within two yeah so that makes that huge difference you can't cover as much base so just get rid of one and use them to protect characters or take 10 and use them as a counter punch. Okay. And rely on those reanimation protocols. Okay. So after that, we've then got the, um, oh, someone's quickly asked captain Brexit said, am I able to put in a list? Um, so the, this is all coming from our students on the Academy, get their list reviewed every single week by us. Um, and the other thing is on the masterclass, for everybody that signs up is going to get the opportunity to, for us to review your list live on that masterclass. I'll be doing that on Saturday. Okay, so there is a chance. And obviously, if you do join the Academy, then you can get your list certainly reviewed by us. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so if you sign up for the masterclass, then I'll be sending an email out on Friday asking for some lists. And I'll pick maybe two to go over yeah. in that masterclass again. Okay, but these are coming from our Academy students. So let's pick out a few more things from here. So... Lich Guard, we probably need a little bit more mm -hmm. or less, but we need that rationale to be clear why they're in the list. Um, the We've got two patrols, right? Yeah. So, and the only reason why we're taking this extra patrol detachment is to get that extra unit of scarabs, yeah? Yeah. So, again, you're paying two CPs for one unit of scarabs, which isn't the best use of command points. However, if you feel like you're not really needing your CPs, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Then if you're not really needing your CPs, is it then better just to take a outrider detachment, spend one more CP and spend three rather than two, take the outrider detachment and put in even more fast attack? Yeah. So just take lots of more, like the concept that you're going for is you've got big blobs of 20 for reanimation, then you've got all these small multi-units. What about if you get rid of all the 20 and you go down the route that you're trying to play with, which is all these small little units, and just go, right, I'm going to take three of the little um, dest orphanage destroyers. Yeah. You know, nine of those, three units of three. Yeah. Real quick, three units of three wraiths, and just take two outrider detachments. Yeah. Three, you know, you know take nine, because you can actually take up to nine fast attack then if you take a battalion and you take yeah. a... Yeah, um, so he's taking uh, extra relics... Uh, taking that uh, extra um, warlord ability, stuff like that, and spending two. So you're spending four CP pre-game. Yeah. You might as well just spend one more. One more. Yeah. And then that way, what you've got then is the ability to take, you know, nine units that are super quick with the pre-game move, and they're all going to harass. Yeah. Mm. And, you, and they're all great in combat. So what you can do here is... What, and especially because there's so much heroic intervention, you can use the wraiths and the destroy and those quick destroyers to make charges. They'll sit in combat and take punches quite well. The scarabs can also charge, but what the scarabs are great at doing is basing. So you can charge in. So if they ever want to interrupt, what you can do, and this is the lesson that we teach on the academy, is when you should base and also how to get around the interrupt, is you can use the scarabs to base your opponent. And you can charge in from one particular angle with the unit you don't want them to interrupt into. Keep a model within an inch, but the others are out. You obsec the objective. You then fight with one unit. They probably won't bother interrupting anywhere else because they're pretty much putting all of their attacks into scarabs, which isn't mm. worth it. And then you get all the other harassing units, okay? But because you've then got multiple units that are also charging, you should be able to swarm the objective quite well and overcome that, okay? So that's kind of what I'm thinking. You've still probably got some points left over for a big blob of 20, which you can, you know, use the cryptex to go, right, have a five plus and vulnerable save, have that plus one cover. So again, I think what I'd really like you to do, Nick, is spend a bit more time with this list, justify a little bit more and really shape the direction of where you want this to go because I feel like it's in a bit of a middle ground yeah. where I don't know if it's going to do much of one or too much of another I think with 
from the play testing that I've done um, with you know the England team and the setup that we're doing with the Necrons, um, I feel like the list you've put together would fall apart quite quickly. And I like it's not going to out obsec Marines or Custodes or Death Guard, which are some of the key players at the moment. It's not going to out obsec Space Wolves or Blood Angels because because they can hurricane intervene. They're just going to clear you off those objectives far too quick. Yes, turn one, you're going to score big, but then you're going to lose all your scarabs. And then your ability to score is sat now in a couple of 20-man units and a few characters sat at the back. And it only takes one unit of, I don't know, like six inceptors, and they'll just delete one unit off. One unit of aggressors will delete a unit. Yesterday when I was using the sisters, we, you know, one unit of Seraf, uh, Zef, uh, the combat Seferins from Sisters, Zephyr Ephraims, whatever they're called, they'll go in and completely clear a unit. One unit of Repentia clears off a unit of 20 Warriors. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. So you either go, I think, full-on Warriors, full-on reanimation, or you go, okay, cool, I'm going to go completely down the OPSEC route. Small multiple units, yeah? Attack, harass, play the mission, do objectives, those little things. Pyromancers, are they, not pyromancers, what are they called? Cryptothrolls? Yeah, they do a very similar use for your lich guard, but um, cheaper, and they protect your chronomancers, which you've gone for. Um, they can do actions for you. Really nice bit of t cool uh, bit of tech you told me yeah. about. So yeah, I think just a bit more clarification, Nick. I really want to see some play testing, and I want your feedback so you can let us know how that's going. But you need to play this going second. Mm -hmm. Because your list is obviously good going first because you've got that pre-game move. What I'm going to be interested in, Nick, is your codes, what order you're going to put them in and why. Okay, I also want to know um, how these games go going second because that's really important. Um, and I want you to play against Death Guard, Marines and also Custodes to see if the offset's worth it. Because if it's not worth it, you're better off going for more damage output or more survivability from some of the other... Um, like dynasties, okay? Because it might just be the OPSEC thing, a bit of a gimmick. Yeah. So we'll see. Right then. There's the third. The third list is Ian Wilson's list. Okay. And uh, it. So just while Joe's getting that up, remember guys, if you want to come to the Mars class on Saturday, link is in the description below. Um, and if you would like to join the Academy, then all the options are on our website as well. So this is one of the free lessons that you get, um, or not one of the free lessons, one of the lessons that you, one of the free lessons you get every single week when you are part yeah. of so the So this academy. is Ian's list from the Pick Your Secondaries lesson that okay. we did. We did this earlier. Yeah, yeah. so it's Logan Grimnar on Storm Rider, a yep. chaplain on a bike, three units of five incursors, yep. wolf guard with jump packs, uh, a five man squad uh, with lightning claws and storm shield, and a ten man squad with thunder hammers and storm shields, and three units of five, thunder wolf cav, uh, two times thunder hammer storm shield, and three lightning claws and shields in each squad. Have we got old uh, big boy on Santa on his head? Yeah, Santa's in there. So, Marines, straight when you look at this Marine list, um, what I would like is an ability to take while we stand, we fight. Mm. And you're so close with it. So, when I'm looking at this list design, I'm thinking, how am I going to score secondary points, okay? At the moment, um, when we think about the secondaries, Things like Raise the Banners is situational because mm. there's some missions you either have to go first or you're going to basically make sure you're on a mission that allows you to raise banners or if mm. your opponent's got any pre-game move or infiltrators, it's going to be really, really difficult to do it. So banners is never a given, okay? Engaging all fronts is probably a given with this list because you've got good mo mobility. But So banners is optional. So then if you're not going to take banners, you've got to put, take deploy scramblers, which are only going to ever give you 10 points. I never like to go into a game thinking I'm only going to get 10 points off this secondary. No. I like the option to max it personally. Okay. So basically what we want to make sure we're doing is if you take one more character and you drop down um, the sleigh to just a, a wolf lord, it could be anything. You've got one chaplain in there. 
Um, again, a librarian for an, maybe not null zone, but again, that's going to be situational where null zone could be absolutely incredible for you in certain matchups, like in Prophets of Flesh um, and all that kind of stuff, because you still get a two up save, don't you, with those um, Thunderwolf? Yeah. You, the Storm Shield, even if you turn off your invulnerable save, you're still on a two up. So something like Talos, which are minus two, you're going to get a four up save anyway. Yeah. yeah with, that's with the AP. So basically, what we want to make sure we're doing is. Librarian probably needs to go in there or whatever the... Is it a priest, wolf priest? Uh, um, yeah. That is certainly a really good shout, I think, to, to have in the list. Um, I think dropping out Mr. Santa on his sleigh, because he yeah. is over 16 wounds, he's too targetable, bringing that down to another character means you've got three good characters that a while we stand, we fight is definitely an option, okay? Yeah. Um, Wilson has said, I like keeping a bore the witch at, a bore the witch as an option. I wouldn't. Well, having while we stand, we fight is a much better option in 80% of matchups. I would much rather choose something I know I'm going to get 80% of leverage out of rather than 20%. Because yeah. okay? most people are taking single detachments now. You're only ever going to see one Psyker averagely. And only once in a while will we ever come up against a Grey Knight or a Thousand Sun player. Yeah. So you're better off knowing that you can bank 15 points yep. instead of five. Yeah. Um, exactly. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, Patrick has said, okay, I Facebook messaged my demon list. Can you tell me what you think? Um, so Patrick, if you want your list reviewed, um, we do that on the Academy. So if you're an Academy student, um, pop it into the Army List Clinic every single week. And again, we do ask you to have done module two, where you go through all the justifications. So we're really getting a good sense of that you're understanding where we're coming from. I'm gonna be covering this on the masterclass and two people that submit their lists for who are coming to the masterclass and the email be sent out on Friday can get the potential to um, you know, have that their army list review from us, okay? Uh, I can't just do anybody's list i suppose because yeah. well we'd be here all day okay so there has to and obviously the academy students come first as i'm sure you guys can appreciate so yeah while we stand we fight we need to have that as an option definitely think so um you've obviously got the new one which is uh, the new space marine one where you can do two things which i really like for space wolves mm. where you can kick somebody off an objective okay so there's a warlord trait that's in the space marine book and i think you definitely need this is to make all of your a thunder wolf cavalry mm. obsec yeah you put a war uh, you put that on a chaplain and or you put that on a um wolf lord whatever it might be the lieutenant version the battle leader on a on a wolf on a bike, jump pack, it doesn't matter. Some sort of quick way to keep up with those cavalry yeah. means that you can go in, have the offset keyword, because that's key, mm -hmm. and then you can punch so hard you can clear your opponent off that objective. Yeah. Going second is really important when you take this secondary because it you score based on what they're holding at the start of the battle round. So what you need to do is, if they're on an objective at the start of the battle round, that's the one you need to hit. So you're not going to get much turn one, unless they've got infiltrators and they've pushed forward. But if they're on that objective, then you attack it, clear them off it in your turn, then you score it. If you're going first, you have to clear them off on the ones they're on. Then what you've got to do is survive a turn so you still hold it at the end of the turn. Yeah. So if they come and claim it back off you at the start, at the end of that battle round, in their second half of the battle round, then you're not going to get it, okay? Um, and then obviously oaths of moment, another you know good potential option because you don't really want to be falling back with the wolves. You know you're unlikely to fail a morale check, but you've got some good options there. But definitely having that while we stand, we fight in play is mm. a good option. So then you don't even need your opponent to have vehicles. You don't need them because you never want to be because your list cannot target characters very well. Um, you can't even jump over. If you have loads of jump pack options, mm. apart you've got the one or two Vanguard vet squads, but they're too easily screened out. If you had lots of different characters with jump packs, mm. like Blood Angels that can literally fly in, troops, uh, sorry, Harlequin troops yeah. can jump over, they can attack characters. Would the, uh, the Reaver Lieutenant be good in this list? Because he can, obviously, he can move quickly, he can deep strike, the deep strike or can infiltrate? One or two. I think so he deep strikes. This one can... Um, 
I'm not sure. I think no, he deep strikes. Yeah, because the Reaver one deep strikes, so he can pop down with the wolves once they get forward. But he has that stratagem where you can turn off the unit's obsec. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah. And I mean, he can just even run up the table, yeah. move in advance. Just keep and, up yeah, you can just turn off that. Um, you, you need yeah. to take the one with the blade. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have a look at him now, but definitely that's something that I've got into my mm. Ultramarines list, which is really yeah. powerful. I know the, the, Codex, the Codex is coming up soon. Um, and I, I, to, I really like uh, Canis Wolfbane because he gives the the wolves their their own attack, the the, the claws and teeth. Uh, they only get to make two attacks with those. Yeah. But then each one gets to make another two attacks. So each one's putting out four attacks, and then they can only have that stratagem which makes them damage two. Um, and obviously, when you charge, you're hitting on twos anyway. Yeah. So um, the, it's quite the, good. the Reaver Lieutenant cannot deep strike. Hmm. But he obviously does get, because he doesn't have strike from above or uh, death from above, which mm. the, the Phobos lieutenant does. So you need to take the Reaver one, that's the one with the, the knife, like the real cool pose one. Yeah. That's the one you need, not the Phobos one with the gun, because the gun one can deep strike, but he doesn't get the Reaver keyword, so he can't turn off Obsec. Yeah. So again, in that matchup where you know your opponent's got all those, the Necrons where they want to push forward, you go, cool, no Obsec for you, yeah. I've now got it. Okay, so... But I really like the rest of the list. I think the Vanguard Vets are fantastic. I think if there's any way to get a banner in your list, to get them a plus one to hit, because that's desperately what they're going to need. The other thing I would think about with your chaplain is, has he gone for the double litanies, master, or anything like that? Let's have a quick look. So it's just a chaplain on a bike, flat, 140 points. I'll open up the Google Doc. Because the most important litany... Yes, he is, he is the wise orator. Yeah, the only thing yeah. is, I don't even like the ability... So, in the turn in which you have to have your um, wise orator to go off, mm. is one in which I wouldn't even risk it. I would just mm. play the stratagem to get reroll misses. Yeah, just auto-pass. Just literally reroll re misses, okay? Mm. Um, does Space Wolf still get plus one to hit on the first turn they charge? Yes. Okay, so you don't need a banner or anything like that then, if that's still their core mechanic. Mm. Which means, do you even need, do you even need a chaplain on bike? Because if you're getting plus one to hit, and you're re-rolling ones from a lord, mm. are you better off with re-rolling ones to hit, re-rolling ones to wound from a lieutenant version and a librarian? They might be three that are better to go with than the chaplain on bike. Yeah. I mean, what a cool model, but... Still, we've got to think about, unless you desperately need the plus two to charge, mm. but I think if you're relying on a plus two to charge, you've either tried to overextend yourself too early, mm. you should just be guaranteeing those charges. Yeah. And the, I don't think you should be relying on that plus two. And the good thing about having characters that have like jump packs instead of the bike is obviously they can go upstairs, and if they get wrapped, if you've got a jump pack, you can get a dodge real yeah. quick. Um, yeah, so we said about the, the bike being the plus two on the charge. Again, the six, the, I actually prefer the plus three consolidation and piling. So again, maybe keep it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I wouldn't even worry. The thing is here, I wouldn't even bother with the wise orator. Mm -hmm. The turn you need that plus two to charge, spend the stratagem point and save your CPs because you might not need that every turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might think actually I'm pretty good with you know, if I just roll a three, if I get it, great. If I don't, fantastic. If I desperately need it, I'm not going to risk even rolling a two or rolling a one. I'm going to just use the stratagem and call it done, okay? Yeah. Um, but again, I think that's going to be absolutely fantastic, yeah. Um, the other thing you might want to look at is, you know, units like the Servitors, which are great, yeah. which can just do sit on your backfield, do some actions. Um, raise some banners so hopefully and that's giving you a little bit more to think about but again i'm sure this space wolf list is going to change dramatically in a few weeks when we get that codex but anyway guys um we're going to leave that there so thank you so much for watching if you do want to come to our masterclass all about list building where i go over my top strategies that i cover in the end of it what you should go away with is a really good insight and confidence knowing how to build a well-rounded list you know, we want to get people away from list tailoring. We don't yeah. want you, you know, you only have to be in a Facebook group in Blood Angels or Drakari or whoever, and it will pop up with 
playing against insert army mm. tomorrow at my local club what army list should i take what unit should i take we want to get you away from that because that's never going to help you write a good army list that you could take to a tournament it's never going to help you develop yourself in your skill set mm. because you're never going to have an answer for everything you're always just going to list tailor depending on who you're playing. That's an awful experience for your opponent. Mm -hmm. And you're not really going to benefit apart from, cool, you've got, to won that, you've got to win that game. But you didn't learn anything apart from you optimized your list to beat that one player. Yeah. I'm going to teach you how you can have the tools, the knowledge, and the skill set so that when you actually go to a tournament or you go to your local club, it doesn't matter who you play, your army can do a job. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you would do if you were a commander in, you know, strategist, right? You want a tool for every, um, every element in your toolbox, you want to have an answer for it, okay? So the link for that is in the description below. Check out that free masterclass. You will get 48 hours to, um, you know, review it. There is going to be a little, like I said, a couple of people will get their lists reviewed from me um, as a nice little gift and freebie. So please, if you do live and I email out on Friday, which is tomorrow, submit your lists, get those in so I can have a look at them before Saturday. And if not, I'll see you on Saturday for our live and uh, have a great weekend, guys, if you're not coming. So till then, see you later. Goodbye.